This is a true story. The story of Donald Lang, an illiterate deaf-mute, caught in the nightmare of a unique criminal trial. But it could be the story of any of us if we found ourselves isolated in a world without sound or language. muscles on you. What kind of work you do with all these type of muscles, baby? Well, boy, you got some muscles. Strong, silent type, hey. Well, look, it's only a block to my place. Ooh. The alley. In the alley? I can think of some much better places. But if that's what you want, that's what you would get.
What do you want with him? I just want to talk to him. Is he here? He's, he's not here. You don't mind if we take a look around, do you? Wait, wait a minute. Who are you? It's okay, honey. Police. Who are you? Janita. Janita Lang. I'll bet you're Donald's sister, right? Yes. Where is he? He's at work. Both my brothers are at work. You all live here together? Yes, since my mother died. It's nice to keep the family together. Family's a very important social structure. Where does Donald work? Southwater Produce Market, but tell me, what's wrong? Whose clothes are these? They're Donald's. I think they're Donald's. Please, what are you talking about? Got a dead woman in an alley about four blocks from here. Looks like a murder. Hey, hold on a second. Yeah, you got a Donald line working here? Yeah, He's a strong one out there. Hey, wait a minute. What do you want him for? Hey! Pocket. Send it over to the lab with his clothes. Where were you last night, Donald? Where'd you meet Ernestine Williams? What happened, Donald? She tried to trick hustle you? Okay, let's start at the beginning. What time did you go to the bar? Listen, kid, we got five witnesses who say they saw you there. They say they saw you leave with Ernestine Williams, saw you pick her up. Look, Donald, we've been to your house, we've got your clothes, and we've got the knife. We've talked to your sister, Donald. Come on, will you talk to us? Hobbs, come here. Nobody can just sit there like that. The guy's got to be a dummy. I still think he's fake. Now, how does he get a job if he's a dummy? How does he work? How do they tell him what to do? Maybe he can read lips. All except yours and mine? He just doesn't read police lips. He's faking. Or maybe he can read and write. Those cops just came pushing into the apartment without a warrant or anything. Pushing my sister around because cause she's a kid and, and grabbing up Donnie's clothes and then going and dragging him off to jail like an animal. Man, they won't even let me see him. Then I have to read in the paper that you've been named a lawyer without asking me nothing. Uh, he had to read in the paper that you were named a lawyer without asking him. What are you smiling about? Being deaf. You're obviously filled with anger and probably hollering a lot, but I can't hear any of it. Please, 
Try to calm yourself. Let's look into this and see how we can help Donald. What are you going to do for Donnie? Nobody's ever done anything for him. Nobody's ever done anything for Donald. I can speak for myself. Then you'll have to look at me when you do so, so that I can read your lips, or else my sister will have to translate for me. That's why they pick you to be the lawyer? Huh? Because you're deaf? Yes. I specialize in the legal problems of the deaf, and the court assumes that I would be the best one to help your brother. Yeah, well, the first problem here is getting him out of jail. Donnie didn't kill that woman. He never hurt anybody in his life. Well, the police say he did. They'd blame it on the pigeons in the park if they thought it would get rid of the case. I don't think they're all that cynical, but I won't know until I've had a chance to look into it. Yeah, well, when's that gonna be? As soon as I can get to it. Yeah, sure. Sure, you'll go look into it after they nailed him to the wall because he can't speak and he can't hear. He can't even cry for help! To the other three and a half million people in Chicago, Donald Lang meant nothing. A black face, a void of silence, a suspected murderer. Lord, you already have 20 cases on your desk. Can't somebody else handle Donald Lang? No. And while I'm inside with him, I'd like you to go over to the new wing and get the information on Manners and Chesley. Lowell, please. You're, you're working 18 hours a day. I, I think it's a mistake. No. I feel that this case is going to be potentially very important for all of us. All right. But don't you want me to go in with you? What for? Donald Lang cannot hear and he cannot speak. What are you going to do? Help me read his lips. To me, Donald was what I might have been, a mute victim of a crippling handicap, if I hadn't learned to speak, to read, to write, before I lost my hearing. If I couldn't communicate, where would I be now? How would I feel, alone, accused, and imprisoned? Hello, Donald. My name is Lowell Myers. I'm a lawyer. Donald, you know why you're here? Why, why you're here? Do you know about the murder? You can't hear anything, can you? How old were you when you lost your hearing? Or were you born deaf? Has anybody ever tried to teach you anything? Do you want some coffee? You. Want coffee? Do you know your name? You know your name? Donald Lang. D O N A L D L A N G. All right. I am a lawyer. You can tell I'm a lawyer because I have a big case and a nice yellow pad. What are you thinking? I wonder how you think. How do you express a visual concept? Not in words, certainly. Maybe you think symbolically. What does your mind call something concrete? Like a broom. My God, what a mystery you are. No, I can't hear a thing. Stone deaf. I haven't heard anything since I was nine years old. I only wear this so that I can hear the vibrations. Vibrations. They tell me whether I'm speaking too loudly, shouting, or speaking too softly. Speaking too softly. 
you figured out that we're the same. Very quickly. Have you ever seen one of these? This bright in four colors. You try. Very good. Someone with an engineering degree wouldn't have put it back that quickly. And they call you dummy. You take it. You. You take this. Present. From me. You keep that. All right. I have to learn more about you. And I can't do it here. I know this is a rotten place to wait. But that's how it is. You keep that. I understand you. Hmm? You understand me? Maybe we have begun something. This was not a murder mystery. It was a human puzzle. Who was Donald Lyon? And how did he come to this point in his life at the age of 20? How did he grow up? Who was his family? Did he have friends, a job, a woman? Without words, could he understand or express emotions, love, anger, fear? Did he know right from wrong? If anyone could help him, these questions had to be answered first then perhaps we'd know what really happened that night in the alley. Yeah, well, what do you want? Jonas, I'm here because I need some information that will help Donald. Donnie didn't kill anybody. How's that for information? You know that. And I know that. Or at least I'm beginning to believe that. But if I had to go into court tomorrow to defend your brother, I would be helpless. Come on in. Have a seat. Get your coffee. Thank you. So what can I tell you? Well, the first thing I would like to know is was Donald born deaf? No, no. Mama, she died six months ago. She said he was okay until he got scarlet fever and almost died. And then his damn crib collapsed one night and he got a real bad bang on the head. He was still a baby, so we never really knew what made him deaf. And his hearing went. Yeah. He only knew one word. It was Mama. He never said that again. Well, I'm sure the family must have tried to get him help. Sure they did. And Donnie saw the inside of every clinic and every agency in Chicago for about 10 minutes each. I wish you could have known my mother. She was stronger and kinder than any person I ever met. And there wasn't a place that she didn't go to ask for help for Donnie. All these private institutions were too crowded to accept Donald? 
There was one that said they would accept him. It's in there somewhere. But they said the fee was $8,000 a year, and that's more than we make together in a whole year. I don't see why the public school facilities could not be utilized in some way. They have special programs. I took him there. They said he couldn't stay. They said he wasn't toilet trained. But he is. It's just that he was so excited about being with all those other children. He's trained just like his brother. And he's bright. And he can do anything he's shown to do. I'm sure he can, but I hope you understand that the state programs are quite limited, both in facilities and funds. You're saying you can't help us? No, not entirely. We'll try to find a facility where he can be given an education. But I can't make any promises. But to inform you that there are no openings for your son, Don. Well, what you gonna do now? You done walked your legs off, and all you got to show for it is this, this uh, bunch of papers like this. We'll teach him ourselves. How? How we gonna do that? Same as we taught him before. We'll show him how to do it until he does it right. Does it right? That's gonna take a lifetime. That's all I've got to get him is a lifetime. I had to show him once, and he could do it. Usually better than you could. It's like that with everything. I mean, we just forgot that he couldn't hear us speak, because he never missed anything. It's like he had eyes in the back of his head. Did he ever get in any trouble with the police? Donnie never had any trouble with anybody. Those streets out there are tough, man. And that's where Donnie grew up. Somehow he managed to escape the evil of it. Sounds too good. Nobody's that pure. Nobody black. Come off it. I'm on Donald's side. I don't care what color he is, and you know it. He grew up in this tough neighborhood. He survived. I would like to know how. How are you going to find out? By asking questions. You go out there asking around, and you come back in a basket. I'll just have to take my chances. Excuse me. Can I have a word with you? Yeah? My name is Lowell Myers. I'm a lawyer for that deaf boy, Donald Lang. I need some information about him. The police got it all. Yeah, but they're not sharing it with me. I'm on the other team. I need some information. Look, mister, you don't belong in here. Why don't you get going? Brother, you don't have to go nowhere. What's the matter with you trying to run away our choice customers? This is my main man. To show how friendly he is, he's gonna buy us all a drink. Won't you find out what everybody's drinking so a man he can take care of it? You know, just ask what everybody's drinking, and uh. I'm trying to do something here for someone you might know. It's a good thing to do, and I would appreciate it if you would let me do it. All right, brother. All right. Thank you. Was Donald a regular in here? Sure. He came in almost every Friday night. Were you here the night of Ernestine's murder? Sure.
Hey, baby, uh, how you doing? Did he ever make any trouble? Come on. How could he? He couldn't argue with nobody. He'd just hang around. A couple of drunks would talk to him for hours, and all he could do was nod and smile at him. When he would leave, would he leave alone or with one of the women? I don't want to talk about no women. You know, the police could close me down for letting him work the bar. Come on, you know I'm not the police. Sure. He went out with the women. I think that's what he came in here for. Did he ever have any trouble with any of these women? Not that I know of. He gave them the money, and they gave him what he wanted. No struggles, no beatings, nothing like that. Nothing. Do you think he killed Ernestine Williams? Why should he? He got what he wanted, didn't he? Then who might have killed her? Maybe somebody wanted money. I wouldn't know. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lowell Myers. I'm an attorney. I don't need none. No, I'm an attorney. I'm a lawyer for the man who was accused of that murder. I hope they'd electrocute him. I can understand how you feel, but I need some facts. Well, I got facts. Now, I saw them leave together. Ernestine gave me her coat to hold. Say, baby, we home the first from it. I'll be right there. You better take your jacket, Ernestine. It's cold out there. You got my man to keep me warm. I heard that. Well, then you were probably still in the bar when she was killed. Oh, no. Mm-mm, I was home. And wide awake. When she was killed? That's right. I heard them yelling. Did you say them? You heard them yelling? Well, I couldn't miss it. They was right down there under my bedroom window, shouting and a-cussing. And then that awful scream. Why didn't you call the police? Oh, I'd be calling them five times a day. They busy down there in that alley. You're sure you heard voices before that scream? I know how people sound when they're arguing. How many voices did you hear? Two, three, four? It was Ernestine and a man. The one that killed. Thank you very much. You've been very helpful. You will. Except for wanting to send Donald to the chair, is Mrs. Harrod a good witness? Yes, I believe she's telling the truth. What do the police think? Guilty. But they see and hear what they want. Don't you too? I have a fight on my hands for this kid's life. Donald Lang is black. Illiterate, deaf, mute. He may even be psychotic. We don't know. We can't test him. But I'm going to see to it that he gets every right the law allows anyone in this situation. Why are you making speeches to me? You must be very frightened. Somewhere along the way, I have to get up in court and plead for Donald. I could make one stupid blunder that would destroy the jury's sympathy. And I'm forgetting how the words sound. 
helped you. You've helped me all my life, but you can't get up and speak to the jury for me. Lowell, are you convinced that he's innocent? Oh, yes, I'm convinced he's innocent. But innocent or guilty, he has a right to be heard. Anything you say, counselor. Someday, I'm going to fire you. Well, you don't pay me enough to fire me. You're right. Bobby, watch it with those onions, will you? Mr. Rigotti? Yeah. I'm Lowell Myers. I'm Donald Lang's attorney. Oh, well, go spring him. That's easy to say. I need a little background on him. I wonder if you could help me. What kind of a kid is he? What the hell do you need background for? Just get him out of jail, huh? The best man I got, I'm short-handed here. Um, can I buy you a beer? You said the magic word. Cops. What do cops know, huh? If they had any brains, they'd be lawyers. Oh, yeah. I said if, if cops had any brains, they'd be lawyers. Or foreman on the loading docks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it ain't easy. I mean, I got a bigger turnover in loaders than I do in vegetables. Hey, yeah. They're loading and unloading the trucks all the time. It drives them crazy. I mean, they get drunk. They, they just stop coming in. But not Donald. Not Donald. He never missed a day from the time he first showed up. crazy enough to do the whole load. <laughs> All right, come on, kid, get off the truck, huh? That's ridiculous. I mean, who left the door open on his gate? Hey. Hey, kid. Uh. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. What's your name, kid? What's your name? What's the matter, can't you hear me? Yeah. Listen, kid, you can't play around here. I mean, we're working here, right? Come on, you gotta get off the dock. Well, there he goes again. Hey, Al, he's perfect for the job. Give him my share of it. I've had it. What are you talking about? You can't quit like that. Why not? Everybody else does. I'll be around Friday and pick up what's coming to me. Terrific. Hey, that's terrific. Hey, thanks a lot, huh? I don't know, kid. I... Look, hey, you... you wanna load this truck? What the hell am I talking about? He's loading it. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, wait, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here. Hey, you want to work for me, huh? You want to, you want to do this? All right, you get paid twenty-two fifty for an eight-hour day, right? What the hell am I telling you for? Because you can't hear me, can you? All right, look, if you show up the next couple of days, you'll find out what you get paid on Friday, right? Right? Right, yeah, okay. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Have fun, knock yourself out. You got a job. One at a time, one at a time. We're gonna be here all day, huh? Friday. I give him his pay and I figure, well, I'll never see him again, right? <laughs> Monday morning, he's right there waiting for me when I come in. Well, for all I know, he comes in on Saturdays and Sundays, too. I mean, what the hell does he know from weekends, right? He couldn't tell time. So, uh, we'd point to the numbers on the clock. 
He'd always come back right on time. Sometimes it, I'd be waiting for a truck to pull in or something. I had some free time, you know, so I'd, I'd write his name down for him on a piece of paper. And he'd try to do it. Yeah, he'd get mixed up. He'd reverse the letters or something. You know. He'd get that disgusted look on his face. He'd grab the paper and throw it down. I had to tear up your insides to see how hard he would try. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is Donald wasn't all shut off and, and dumb, you know, I mean, without feelings, without, without a way of looking at things. I mean, he was so aware of things. Most people, they don't even notice, you know. Like, uh, like the weather. Like the, the look of things. The feel of things. I mean, he wasn't a dummy like that. Did he ever make any trouble? Yeah, some of the guys used to complain he was ruining the job by working too hard. He played at it. I mean, he'd throw those vegetable crates around like they were footballs. They couldn't keep up with them. I, I told him, I told him, if they didn't shut up, I was going to go to some deaf school and hire five more guys just like Donald. <laughs> How did you learn who he was? Oh, yeah. His mother came in with him one day. That's a real nice woman. And Mrs. Lang, that's a great lady. She, she wanted to thank me for being so nice to her kid. How about that, huh? Yeah, she told me how about how they, they, you know, they taught him how to work and take care of himself. How old was he when he started on the dock? Never mind. He was big enough, so he was old enough. He became a man on the docks. The other guy saw to that. And you. <laughs> oh, what are you laughing? I can barely walk on the dock today. He's laughing. There you go, Tang. Where's the dummy? <laughs> what happened? Did he go home without his pay? It's <laughs> all in for him. He's going to need it. Would you mind telling me what the joke is? I could use a laugh right about now. You couldn't let the kid alone, could you? Hey, Rigotti, he ain't a kid no more. Didn't you notice? He's a grown man. With that, where else is he gonna go to where he is, huh? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. picked him up. He's there every day for four years. Any kind of weather, day in and day out. Hey! 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 Come here! Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, baby! Hey, what are you doing here today, huh? Bad Angel Friday. Yeah, but your credit is good with me, Turkey. If I can hold your watch. Hey, can't you see we eat lunch? Baby, but why, what you gonna have for dessert? Oh. <laughs> why don't you ask them what they're gonna have for dessert? Huh? Oh. Move it, please. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Come on back! Hey! Smart talk yourself in the Cook County Jail. Oh, oh, oh. oh, just shoot me in the leg, officer. I'll go quietly. He's a strong one out there. What are those fruitcakes doing? Fruitcakes, man. 
That's a little game they play for exercise. It's called beanbag. Maybe you'd like to play. Hey, wait a minute. What do you want him for? Hey! Hey, hold on a second. Yeah, South Warren. Wait a minute! All right, Kenny, I'm on the phone. Run away? You're under arrest. Suspicion of murder. Wait a minute. Hey, man, what, what are you that? doing? What the hell? What are you what? doing? You can't talk hey, to me. Hey, man. What the? Yes. Not until the cops picked him up. He's there every day for four years. Any kind of weather, day in and day out. Everybody work like that? Might not look so bad around here. Man, I can do pretty good work. But let me tell you something, Sergeant. There ain't no future. Don't. Let's go for a ride. We had to go back to the beginning for the police as well as myself. What had happened in this dreary place that night? And how could Donald possibly tell us? Joe, where's my client? Coming. They got caught at the light. This is a tough one. For you or for me? For both of us. But at least you've had the experience of dealing with defendants like this. The DA's office has never had to try a deaf mute on a felony before. You know Hobbs and Romaine homicide? What? Sergeant Hobbs, Detective Romaine, homicide. Let's go. Why don't you take off those cuffs? He can't even gesture with those on. Hobbs. Come on, Gib. Hello, Donald. You recognize her? How about that? You remember that? Hmm? Help us out. Come here, Donald. It's all right. It's all right. Come on. Stranger is coming in, start to fight with him. He's trying to hurt him with a knife.
struggle. Donald is knocked down. There, see? He's playing the killer. Yes, he's showing us what happened, don't you see? That's the killer with the knife. He's showing us. What are you doing? He's just showing you what happened. The victim grabbed his wrist and tried to save her life. Look, Joe, I don't know how you're going to take it to court, but this guy just acted out of confession. Either way, he was here when it happened. And the real witness is dead. Looks to me like we got ourselves a murder trial. Just heard Sergeant Alonzo Hobbs, the Homicide Division of the Chicago Police Department, testify to the results of his investigation that the deceased had a previous record of arrests as a prostitute in the area where the crime occurred, that she was a patron of the Romeo Bar, appearing there nightly to drink and make contact with her customers, that Donald Lang was also a regular of the Romeo Bar, and that Ernestine Williams and Donald Lang left the bar together the night of her death and did not return. Her body was discovered the following morning nearby. I call upon the grand jury to return an indictment against Donald Lang for murder in the first degree. The vote is for indictment of Donald Lang on a charge of murder in the first degree. I wonder what that guy's thinking. I know what he's thinking. He's thinking about getting his hands on another broad. If we let this animal out, we'll have a string of dead hookers in the ghetto. Easy does it, baby. Oh, come on. This guy's a deaf mute Jack the Ripper. Aren't you, sweetheart?
dare you test Lang without including me? We do what we have to do. The kid is a murderer. You violated her constitutional rights. Without my being there to interpret for him, he had no idea what was going on. He's defenseless. Look, Myers, according to the what? police... According to the police, every time the dummy walks through the neighborhood, they find a dead hooker. That's a lie. You just want a fall guy, and don't call him a dummy in my presence again. I am going to put him away. And get your face all over the front page. Could do you a lot of good. Right up the ladder. They're ready to start. Donald Lang, petitioner versus the people of the state of Illinois, respondent. Indictment number 683471 in a charge of murder. Competency hearing. Mr. Prosecutor. The jury is being asked a simple question. To determine on the basis of evidence whether Donald Lang is competent or incompetent to stand trial. If he's found competent, he would stand trial. If he's found incompetent, he would not stand trial, but would be sent away to a state hospital for treatment. I object, Your Honor. The law does not state that a man found incompetent to stand trial should be sent anywhere, and the prosecutor's suggestion that he be sent to a state hospital should be expunged. The court will decide where he'll be sent at the proper time. But, Your Honor, the state is trying to write into the law an intention that does not exist, merely to dispose of Donald Lang. The state maintains that Donald Lang is unable to stand trial because of his handicaps. But these handicaps are permanent. Therefore, Donald Lang will never get a trial. He will spend the rest of his life waiting for a trial that will never happen. Where does he do his waiting? Can the state hold him for 50 years for a trial that will never take place? The answer is no. Well, Mr. Myers, I must withhold judgment until the state has presented its petitions and you have made your case. Call your witnesses, Mr. Myers. Julius Lang. Mr. Lang, the court knows that you are not an expert witness. But based on your 20 years of living with Donald, what would you like to say about him? Well, except for his being a deaf mute, Donnie is a very normal human being. Have you ever worked with your brother? Hey, he's helped me with my car. Uh, he's helped me do various carpentry things in the house. Plus, he's self-sufficient on his own. He works and supports his own self. And what does he do with the money he earns? Well, he buys his own clothes. Uh, he uses some for various recreational purposes. He, uh, he likes movies. He's also a member of the YMCA over on Ashland and Monroe. He likes basketball and volleyball and swimming. How does he learn things? Oh, anytime you want Donnie to learn something, you just show it to him once and explain it to him. And from then on, you have no trouble. He'll do it anytime you want it. Mr. Lang, would you like your brother to come back and live with you again? Yes. Yeah, very much. Thank you. That's all. I can call the Reverend Jameson. Reverend Jameson, are you related to Donald? No. How long have you known him? Approximately 12 years. His mother was a member of my congregation. Based on your long experience with Donald, what is your opinion of his mentality? Oh, he's very quick, uh, but he's lacking in education. What would you say about his personality, his temperament? His personality is very good. Uh, he's very quiet, and he wants to live a normal life. We never have any trouble. Thank you very much, sir. That's all. We have no further witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Smith, please proceed. Dr. Morris, what position do you occupy on the staff of the university? I'm the director of the Institute of Language Disorders and have directed it for 15 years. I'm professor of language pathology in the School of Speech, professor of psychology in the College of Arts and Sciences, and professor of neurology and psychiatry in the medical school. What form did your examination of Donald Lang take? Well, it included mental ability, social maturity, ability to communicate, aptitude, hearing, and uh, motor ability. Did you formulate an opinion as to his mental capacity? In my opinion, his mental capacity falls at about seven years. He's a higher level imbecile. He does not have the mental capacity to understand the indictment against him or to cooperate with his counsel. Uh, just one more point, Doctor. Did the suspect show any emotional reaction to the test? Yes. What did he do? He appeared to become extremely frustrated and angry and hurled the test apparatus to the floor. 
How do you classify that reaction in your report on the examination? As one of hostility and aggression. Thank you. That is my opinion. Thank you. Dr. Morris, after you gave him the tests, did you go to the jail and ask the jailers what his behavior had been? I did not. You did not. Did you go to his relatives and speak to them, find out what his behavior had been with them? I did not. You did not. Dr. Morris, did you go to the place where he had been working and ask his co-workers what his behavior had been with them? You did not! Your client will have to be kept under control during these proceedings, Consular. Yes, Your Honor. May we approach the bench? Your Honor, I object to the treatment of my client. He's brought in here like an animal and handcuffed to a chair. The fact that he doesn't speak doesn't make him any less human. Test show. He's dangerous and should be restrained. Have you ever been held under armed guard and have a stranger poke pieces of wood and drawings in your face? Have you ever been chained and humiliated? Gentlemen, gentlemen! I have no further questions for this expert witness, Your Honor. Listen, you have to try to be calm. To try to be calm. Very calm. You understand? I know you'd rather be on the docks loading letters. So would I. But they're not going to railroad you. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendant, Donald Lang, was mentally and physically incompetent at the time of the impaneling of this jury, and now is mentally and physically incompetent. Record the verdict, Mr. Clerk. It is therefore ordered and adjudged that the said Donald Lang is now physically and mentally incompetent, and judgment on these verdicts is now entered. Further ordered and adjudged that the Sheriff of Cook County take the defendant from the bar of this court to the common jail of Cook County, thence to the Illinois Security Hospital at Chester, Illinois, there to deliver the said Donald Lang to the Department of Mental Health of the State of Illinois at said institution. It is further ordered the said Donald Lang be confined in said institution as provided by the laws of the State of Illinois until he shall have fully and permanently recovered from his incompetence. I can't. I will. 
fight for you. He's a suspected murderer. And he's been judged physically and mentally incompetent. You heard one of the best clinicians in the country describe Lang as an imbecile. But I know he's not an imbecile. Just because he refused to take the tests doesn't make him an imbecile. I also know he's not a murderer. Need I remind you that he's a ward of the court until he's convicted of something? That boy doesn't even have a parking ticket. Can you say the same? Oh, come on, Lowell. Oh, come on, Frank. Get him out of there. You put him in a cage full of maniacs. There's no special training. The facility is operated by the Department of Mental Health. They're very aware of the special requirements of the handicapped. Frank, the boy doesn't need any more isolation. He's already isolated enough. What he needs is special training. All right. Now let's try the alphabet again. Can you make an A? You hold your hand like this. That's how you make an A. A. This is a B. Any sign of progress at all? Well, Dr. Romney seems willing to work with a therapist, but he wants to leave the ward with her. Oh, probably thinks cooperating with a therapist and him the right to leave, possibly go home. B. Will you try and make a B? No, 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 Doc. He's, uh, he's been in isolation since he arrived, hasn't he? Completely. Uh, well, uh, if he wants to get out of the war, uh, let's permit limited fraternization and uh, see how he is. And we can try again with training after that. Mm -hmm. A. 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 B. No dog. No. No dog. No. Come on. Now. A. Yes. A. Yes. Very good. Very good, Donald. A. B. B. Guard. Guard! If Donald is mentally okay, but unable to stand trial because of his deaf-mute handicap, then he cannot be put into a mental institution for the criminally insane. Instead, the court should place him in a special school for deaf-mutes, where he will be taught sign language when he has acquired a reasonable ability to communicate in sign language, he can then be placed on trial the same as anyone else. We believe that he would then be found not guilty and would then go home and pick up the threads of his life where he left off, rather than the steady deterioration which is inevitable if he remains confined in his present circumstance, circumstances. Now, the prosecution is assuming that there is no difference whether Donald is placed temporarily in a school to learn sign language or whether he is placed in a mental institutional institution permanently for the criminally insane. Of course there is a difference. Do you want that last line in the brief? Damn right. Judges are human too. Some of them. Thank you.
What's the matter? Let's 
take a moment together. I'll get you again, you little... That's enough, Johnson! I'm ordering you confined to your cell. To hell with you, you honky! The law is an imperfect vehicle. It has no accelerator. And by the time the Illinois State Supreme Court ruled on the brief filed for Donald Lang, he had been in the mental hospital for nearly a year. The justices held that the lower court should have handed Donald over to the Department of Mental Health to restore him to competency. in his life, Donald Lang was going to go to school. You know, all these words begin with C. C. This is a C. Car. C. Cat. C. Comb. C. Cup. C. Okay? This is a cup. 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 Do it with me now. Cup. 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 Good. Cup. Cup. That's it. Cup. 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 When will he get so he really understands? Would you repeat that? said, when will he get so that he really understands? In about five or ten years, if he works very hard, he'll have perhaps a thousand signs. Then he can start to learn about the meaning of ideas. What are you talking about? Five or ten years is a lifetime. He is in jail. He's not out walking around. I am talking about the problems of deaf people. If Donald had gone deaf after he had learned to speak, the way it happened to me, things would be much easier. But now? He has to start from scratch. And he has to do it all. Why not? It's his problem. His problem? Yes. What's your solution? What do you want to do? I want him home. I mean, we can teach him ourselves. Can't you get him out? Look, I'm going back to the Supreme Court for a writ of habeas corpus. That's a demand that they produce the body for a new trial. A trial? A trial? How can he have a trial in his condition? Let me explain this very clearly. A trial is your brother's only chance that he will ever be set free. I don't know if I can handle a trial in my condition. The clock is ticking for me. I am losing the ability to speak properly. And if I can't argue Donald's case, no one will.
Mitchell. Thank you. Raymond Hayes. There you are, Raymond. Donald Lang. This is Donald's first day. First payday, I should say. What have we got for him? He's worked very hard. He wants more. Donald, that, that's, that's it. Three years had passed since Donald Lang was placed in school. Years that had taught Donald little more than the meaning of institutional life. Cut off from his work with other men, deprived of independence and respect, Donald learned boredom, resentment, frustration. Teaching Donald sign language was like training a blind man to copy the Sistine Chapel. As a child, he might have learned to mimic the gestures with ease, but now, confronted with an abstract jumble of meaningless words and symbols, Donald became impatient and hostile. The kind and sunny youth of the Southwater docks was being molded by the state into an embittered adult. Those years built up a wall of isolation around Donald, ever thicker and more impenetrable. Soon, he would be unreachable. Donald had become a symbol for me, the ultimate example of all the handicapped, ignored and mistreated by an overburdened and impersonal legal system, ill-designed to handle special problems. Time was running out for me as well. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Each year it was harder for me to speak, to gauge the sound of my voice. More and more effort was needed to make myself understood. I had to get to the state Supreme Court to take Donald's case before I could no longer plead for him. Brief after brief was filed, delay followed delay, but at last we had a chance. The Illinois Supreme Court granted us the hearing for which we had fought so long. Donald Lang is a deaf mute and an illiterate. He presently knows no sign language or method of silent communication. He does not know the nature of the charges against him and is unable to cooperate with his counselor. He cannot be tried for murder without violating his constitutional rights. It is apparent the people are powerless to act until Donald Lang has been restored to competency. Therefore, he must remain in the school until he is competent to stand trial. Thank you. Donald Lang does not come before the court to challenge the competency statute under which he has been adjudged incompetent to stand trial. The person who wrote the statute assumed that anyone who could not stand trial would be severely mentally ill and therefore should be committed to a mental institution. But he forgot about deaf-mute people like Donald Lang. Who might not be able to understand a trial, yet might still be perfectly normal, apart from the handicap. But the fact remains that Donald's lawyer has to take every step possible to get him out of his life imprisonment. I must act for Donald because he cannot act for himself. For ordinary, everyday activities, language is not really needed. It's nice to have, but it's quite possible to get along without it. Suppose you were watching an old movie with Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin could make an audience cry and laugh and communicate 
very complicated situations and conflicting emotions without using a single word. Or put yourself, say, in a foreign country, in Russia, in a city in Russia, where you could not understand anything that people were saying. You could not read the street signs, you could not read the newspapers, yet you would still be an intelligent person. And you probably could get along very well through gestures and pantomimes. But let's also suppose that the police suddenly put handcuffs on you and brought you to a courtroom where everyone was speaking Russian and you could not understand one word. Would you be incompetent? This is essentially the situation in which Donald finds himself. Now, the state has the right to delay the criminal trial of Donald Lang in order to make a bona fide effort to educate the defendant and teach him how to communicate. We can try to teach a cow to eat sawdust, but it will resist. We can try to teach a man with shaking palsy to walk a tightrope, but he will resist. The state maintains that Donald has resisted such an education. Why? Donald probably resists because he already knows by experience that he can communicate in his own way and that any attempt to learn a language is hopeless. He's probably known that since he was five or six years old. Donald accepts these facts about himself, but he comes here today to demand that the court and the state of Illinois also face facts. A deaf mute cannot be imprisoned for life because he has the handicap of not being able to communicate. A deaf mute cannot be imprisoned for life because he is merely accused of a criminal offense without being given a trial and without ever being convicted. A deaf mute who cannot communicate has a right to a normal life. He has a right to marry. He has a right to travel. He has a right to work. His rights cannot be arbitrarily taken away from him. A deaf mute who cannot communicate, who is accused of a criminal offense, has a fundamental legal right to a trial so that he can try to establish his innocence. He cannot be indefinitely imprisoned while denied such a trial. We do not come here today to seek judgment on a fine legal point. We come here today to seek judgment on what is a basic and fundamental tenet of morality. Donald Lang's trial can no longer be delayed. He has a constitutional right to a criminal trial so that he can prove that he is innocent of the charges against him. Thank you. On the big ones, Lowell. The justices have ordered Donald to trial and instructed us to expedite it. Well, it's about time. Congratulations. See you in court. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Yes, 
sir. Hello. I'm Lowell Meyer. I'm an attorney. This is a court order allowing me to see the evidence in the state versus Donald Lang. Five years ago. Five years ago. It's been a very long time. Okay. Wait right here. If we can find blood on the back of Donald's clothes, I mean drops, not smears, I can advance the theory that he was knocked to the ground and he was lying there while Mrs. Williams was being attacked. Enough. Where are his clothes? That's all we have. No, there was a jacket, slacks, and his underwear. This is from the jacket. This is from the slacks. Here's a picture of the shorts. This is no good. This is not physical evidence. Wasn't there something else? The knife. Where is the knife? Hmm. Been a long time. Files get moved, things get lost. A man's life is at stake here. Counselor, would you like me to call the inspector who runs this office? No. I'll see him in court. It's very good. Thank you very much. Very good. What the hell is the case? Bartender disappeared. Probably dead. Mrs. Harris, who held Ernestine Williams' coat, she died two years ago. What about the other two? Mrs. Jenkins is in a TV clinic. She'd never make it to court. The old guy's in jail in Detroit. So that's my case. Well, it was circumstantial to begin with. Yeah, and all the circumstances have changed, right? Right. Well, State of Illinois versus Donald Lang, charged with the death of Ernestine Williams in the city of Chicago, Cook County, State of Illinois. Mrs. Smith? The court understands you wish to place a motion before the bench? Yes, Your Honor. The state has determined in its preparation for trial that four of its major witnesses linking the defendant, Donald Lang, with the circumstantial evidence of his involvement in the murder are no longer available and cannot be produced in court. Consequently, our motion is to dismiss the charges against the defendant. Any objections, Mr. Myers? None, Your Honor. It is the court's decision to confirm it. The charges are dismissed. You're free. You can go home. You are completely free. It's over. All over.
Hello. Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Sit down. I'll, I'll get some coffee. How come you didn't come over to the dock? I didn't want Donald to get the idea that I was checking up on him. So what are you doing here? I'm checking up on him. <laughs> right. He's all right. He's all right. I mean, he comes in on time every day. I mean, he still works harder than anybody else over there. Yeah, I guess he's doing great. You know? Your guess? Yeah, well, yeah, there's something different about him. How? Oh, what the hell do I know, man? I'm in the produce business. Like, uh, it's like he learned something from all those jails he was in, you know. But not the right things. six months after Donald's release that he picked up a prostitute in a bar and went with her to a nearby hotel. He was the last person seen with her. The woman was found murdered the following morning. The evidence was once again circumstantial. It may be that the case of Donald Lang will one day be heard before the United States Supreme Court. It may be that the charges against him will be dismissed. But Donald Lang knows nothing about such matters. Currently, he is in Chicago's Cook County Jail. One day, perhaps, if it is not too late, a way may be found to release him from the real prison, the true solitary confinement in which he has been forced to spend his entire life.